Hello, my name is Mrs. Trenier, and I teach music at John Rogers Elementary. I miss my students very much, so I'm glad to be with you sharing my love of music today. I'm also at home with my family and my pets and taking walks around the neighborhood. Did you know April is Black Women's History Month? Black history holds many female leaders who have had an impact in the world. In this lesson, we will learn about a talented and inspiring South African woman who was named Miriam Makeba. We will also listen for music elements in some of her songs, and we'll learn a song together as well. I would like to share two words that come to my mind when I think of the book that we're going to be hearing today. Courage is being able to take on difficulties, danger, and pain despite being afraid. It's a state of mind. Brave is the ability to confront difficulties, danger, and pain in the face of pressure without fear. It's strength of character. The country of South Africa where Miriam Makeba was born is at the very southern end of the African continent. Beginning in the 1600s, the Dutch colonized South Africa. These Dutch settlers also forcibly brought enslaved people from other parts of Africa to South Africa to work on their farms and plantations. By the early 20th century, after the British government took control, many Africans began to be forced into specific areas of cities like Johannesburg. These areas were called townships. They were economically disadvantaged areas with few resources. As the all-white South African government passed ever harsher laws restricting the rights of the people in the townships, the people rose up in protest. Music was an important outlet for people to express their struggles and call out for justice. Miriam Makeba, like other musicians in the townships, was surrounded by music from many different cultures and in many different styles. From this, she created songs that blended traditional African musical styles with Western styles of music like jazz and created a new South African musical style, often called Afropop. Here are some words to think about for Mama Africa. Apartheid, a former South African system of racial segregation that gave all the political power to the white minority. It meant separateness. Appeal, asking for help from others, usually someone with power. Nightingale, a small bird with a beautiful song. Protest songs, songs that call out against something that people believe is wrong. Now we're ready for our book. We'll start by hearing a little bit of one of Miriam's most famous songs, Pata Pata. <laughs> Mama Africa, How Miriam Makeba Spread Hope with Her Song by Katherine Erskine and illustrated by Charlie Palmer. Miriam sang as soon as she could talk and danced as soon as she could walk. She sang folk songs as her mother played the drums. She sang pop songs for her brother and his friends. She sang hymns with her sisters in the Sunday school choir. Music gets deep inside me and starts to shake things up, she said. And from deep inside, Miriam began to shake up the world. At church, her choir teacher tells Miriam she is free to sing out. But out in the world, Miriam is not free. Unless people have white skin, they are not free. Police raid their homes. Sometimes they are arrested. Sometimes they never return. To the bosses, the white people who rule South Africa, Miriam's people are just Bantus. Bantus as if all people with darker skin were the same. Miriam knows better. They are Kosa, Nedubili, Zulu, Swazi, Tsawana, and so many more. They each have their own songs and languages and histories, but they do have one thing in common. The bosses take away their freedom. So they are all Miriam's people. They have one another, and they will not live this way forever. Umoya, she sings, spirit. Listen as I play a short piece of a recording of Miriam singing Umoya. How is she using her voice? What instruments do you hear? And what kind of mood or feeling does this song give you? <laughs>
The Bantu spirit must be broken, the bosses decide. They pass even harsher laws of apartheid to keep the races separate, crushing the rights of black people and trying to silence their voices. But Miriam's voice will not be silenced. She goes to the big city, Johannesburg, and sings. Even protest songs in Isihosa, Isizulu, Setswana, and more. Because the bosses don't understand those languages. It is risky, but Miriam has listened to the protest songs of American singers like Billie Holiday and Ella Fitzgerald, and she feels brave. Who can keep us down as long as we have our music, Miriam asks. Bravely, she sings out like a nightingale. Soon, she is so popular that everyone wants to hear her. One night, she meets a man she can tell will be a great leader. His name is Nelson Mandela. But Miriam is worried for him. The Freedom Charter he and others are writing argues that South Africa belongs to all who live in it black and white. Everyone must have freedom, it says. Freedom? You have no freedom, the police shout. Black people in South Africa must get permission to be out of their own neighborhoods and must carry passes to prove it. If they don't show their passes to the police, they are arrested and jailed. Sometimes the police say that their passes are not valid, and sometimes Miriam and her friends are thrown in jail. Still, that doesn't stop Miriam from singing. Why do you think that being in jail doesn't stop Miriam? How do you think she and her friends feel about having to go to jail? Her anger fuels her fight to stop apartheid. Surely other people in the world would help if only they knew. She decides to sing in a secret movie against apartheid to tell those outside South Africa what the bosses are like. It is dangerous. Many people, like Nelson Mandela, have already been arrested for telling the truth. She hopes the whole world will watch. Watch out, the bosses tell Miriam. They suspect she is acting in the anti-apartheid movie. They have no proof yet, but they warn her Beware. The bosses pass more laws to stop people from protesting. They arrest thousands and kill many. Two of Miriam's uncles are killed in the struggle for freedom. The bosses simply say, We do not intend to get upset by what is being said in all ignorance in the outside world. But the outside world is no longer ignorant they start listening to Miriam's songs. She sings to her people to be brave, Jolinkamo. She sings of police raids, Kalueza. She sings of her people being jailed, La Kuchona Ilanga. She sends them strength with her song. Listen as Miriam tells people about what the song Kalueza means, and listen to how her voice sounds as she sings it. Kaoleza is a South African song. It comes from the townships, locations, reservations, whichever, near the cities of South Africa, where all the black South Africans live. The children shout from the streets as they see police cars coming to raid their homes for one thing or another. They say, Kaoleza, Mama, which simply means, hurry, Mama, please. Please don't let them catch you. Her song becomes so strong that she is invited to the United Nations to speak about South Africa. From this stage, she can tell the whole world. The whole world is listening. Miriam feels very small in the giant building. Her voice is small too, like a nightingale's. But as she thinks about her mother, her family, her people, she finds strength. 
Here's Miriam's words to the United Nations. I appeal to you and to you to all the countries of the world to do everything you can to stop the coming tragedy. She thinks about Nelson Mandela, who can lead her people to freedom, and her voice gets stronger. I appeal to you to save the lives of our leaders, to empty the prisons of all those who should never have been there. As she speaks, her voice grows louder and louder, larger and larger, until it fills the huge chamber and spills into the ocean and wraps around the world. Her voice is like the roar of a lion, a mother lion of South Africa, Mama Africa. The author compares Miriam to a nightingale at the beginning of her speech and to a lion at the end of her speech. In what way is she like a nightingale? And in what way was she like a lion? How is she being courageous or brave or both? South Africans, many of them, both black and white, protest apartheid, marching, striking, speaking, writing. Some black protesters must flee the bosses. They go to Northern Africa and find Mama Africa. Mama Africa helps the refugees, young men and women, even children. She gives them food, clothes, and song. When her song becomes too loud for some, they say she is not a singer, but a politician. I am no politician, she says. I just see what I think is wrong and what is right. Her song is strong. Mama Africa will not give up. She will see her people free. Give us our land, Mbayeke. Voices everywhere grow so loud that the bosses have to listen. They are losing allies, money, and power. Apartheid is crumbling. Mayibuye i Africa. Come back, Africa, Mama Africa roars. Mandela hears her roar. He says he will help the bosses find a way to end apartheid and share the country equally. The bosses must finally face the truth. All people of South Africa must have their freedom. Freedom. Mama Africa watches Mandela walk out of prison. She watches the laws of apartheid fall one by one, and she sees her people stand tall. She sings with joy. Finally, her people are free. Free at last, Mandela cries, and the crowds cheer. Now everyone in South Africa is free. Now everyone can go where they want, live where they want, and be who they want. Now Mama Africa can come home. Home. Mama Africa was finally home. She sang in celebration. She sang for the Kosa and Zulu and Nandubile and Swazi and all the races. She sang for her mother. She sang for the children. Her voice flowed down the Limpopo River, out to the ocean, and around the world. It even reached up to the heavens as she sang together with her people, Nkosi Sekeleli Africa, God Bless Africa. I'm going to read a quote from the author who, as a young girl, lived in South Africa. What inspires me about Miriam Makeba is her resilience, her refusal to give up, and her unfailing dedication to her people which drove her to battle impossible odds. I have often thought, if she could do it, why can't we all use our voices, our song, to confront the thinly veiled apartheid of the United States and inhumane treatment anywhere in the world? And here's a quote from Miriam. There are three things I was born with, hope, determination, and song. Now take a moment to think, how did Miriam and her people show perseverance? How did she help them reach their dreams of freedom for all? And who else helped in this story?
Do you remember the song that Miriam sang at the end of the book, Nkosi Sekaleli Africa, when she was celebrating with her people? This is a national anthem of South Africa, and this song illustrates so well the way that the country has many groups of people and many languages and cultures inside of its borders. You will notice when we look at the lyrics that part of the lyrics are in Kosa, in the Kosa language, and part of the lyrics are in the Zulu language. Now we're going to listen to Miriam sing it with a group of musicians. <laughs> And those words in English translate to, God bless Africa, may her glory be lifted high. Here are prayers, bless us, your children. Let's try speaking the words. Let's start with the words in the Kosa language. I will speak a line and you speak it back again with me. Nkosi sekeleli Africa, say it with me. Nkosi sekeleli Africa, second line, malu paganiswu, say that with me, malu paganiswu. Let's say that second line again, malu paganiswu. The line after that is upondolwayo, say that with me. Upando yo. Let's try all three lines together slowly. Nkosi sekeleli Afrika Malu pagani swupando yo. And now let's try the section in the Zulu language. One thing to notice is that the words in Zulu that are written with a th don't sound like the English pronunciation of TH, which is usually th. They sound more like just a T by itself. Let's try that first line. I'll speak it, then you speak it with me. Izwa imitanda zoye tu. Let's try it together. Izwa imitanda zoye tu. And then the second and third lines kind of go together. So let's try those slowly. I'll speak it first. Ko si sekilela tina lu sapolwayo. Try it with me. Ko si sekilela tina lu sapolwayo. Sometimes when I'm learning a new song, I just like to try singing along to the music best that I can. Since I'm learning this song just like you are, I'm gonna sing along with Miriam and you can try listening or singing along if you know this. I want you to listen to see if you can hear any words that repeat. Let's try it. Here we go. Kosi si kaleli Afrika Malu pagani swu pundo wayo Izwa ipitanda so yetu Kosi si kalela ti Did you see here some parts that repeated? Like, I feel like Kosi happened more than once. Now let's try Echo singing those lines. I'll start and then you sing with me after. Kosi si kaleli Africa. Try it with me. Kosi si kaleli Africa. 
Africa. My turn. Malu Paganis, Wupando Ayo. Let's do it together. Malu Paganis, Wupando Ayo. My turn. Iswa Imitanda, Zoye Tu. Together. Iswa Imitanda, Zoye Tu. My turn. Ko Si Si Together. Ko si si kalela. My turn. Tina lusapu ayo. Together. Tina lusapu ayo. And for our final challenge, let's try singing it together with Miriam and see how we do. All right, here we go. O si si kaleli Afrika, malupa kani su pando ayo. Iswa imi tanda zo yetu. O si si kalela ti. Thank you for listening and learning and singing along with me today. I hope that you enjoyed that biography about Miriam Makeba and how she changed the world with her actions and her song and inspired others all around the world. Remember, music connects us to people all around the world and it can change the world. I hope that this story inspires you to keep trying and never give up on the things that you dream of. Bye for now.